Hello, I'm Patty Simpson for Simpson Math. In previous videos, we graphed transformations. We graphed translations, dilations, and reflections of functions. In this video, we're going to graph multiples of those within one function. So we may have a function that is shifted left or right, or maybe up or down, as well as being dilated, so stretched in one direction or another, as well as being reflected either over the x-axis or over the y-axis. We're going to have multiple operations occurring within the function. So first, since we're going to have multiple operations occurring, we need to look at the order that we're going to do those operations in, or the order of operations. Now, we've dealt with order of operations before, just when we're adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing numbers. And our order of operations typically is parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division from left to right, and addition and subtraction from left to right. We think of that PEMDAS, or that please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, to help us remember the order of operations. And I'm gonna use that to help me also remember the order of operations when I'm um, graphing transformations. So usually I think of parentheses first as my order of operations. And in graphing transformations, I need to first do my horizontal shift. And that horizontal shift will always be inside a grouping symbol. It's the addition or subtraction that takes place inside a grouping symbol. So maybe it's inside parentheses or underneath the radical or inside absolute value signs. But the horizontal shift is going to occur when it's inside the function. So we'll look at that first. Then the exponents, we actually don't need to worry about because the exponents are just going to tell us the shape of the function. So for instance, in this one, it has a 2 on the function, an exponent of 2. But we know that that 2 just means that this function is a quadratic. And so it's going to look something like this. We learned about those on our parent functions. And so we know that a, a second degree um, or a quadratic function looks like this. A cubic function looks like that. We know what those different functions look like. So we don't need to worry about our exponents. The multiplication and division, well, in a function, when we're multiplying by a negative 1, that gives us a reflection. And if it's multiplying by negative 1 on the outside of the function, then that reflects it um, vert vertically. It affects our y values, and so therefore it reflects it vertically. If it's multiplying by negative 1 inside the function, inside the grouping symbol, then that's going to reflect it horizontally or affect our x values. So we'll look at those re the reflection, and then we'll look at our stretches and our shrinks, our dilations. And again, if we're multiplying outside the function, if we're multiplying the function by a number, then that's going to stretch it or shrink it vertically. And if, if being multiplied inside the function, uh, inside that grouping symbol, then that's going to stretch or shrink it um, horizontally. Then last but not least, we'll look at some addition or subtraction that is outside the function. And when we are adding or subtracting outside the function, then that's going to be a vertical shift. It's going to affect our y values, and so therefore either shift the function up or down. So before we actually get to graphing, let's just go through these three functions and look at the different transformations that are occurring. So for instance, in this one, this example, this, we know, is a quadratic function. It's a quadratic, so the shape's going to look like this. And inside the function, we are subtracting 1. Anytime we're doing something inside the function, it tells me that it's going to affect my x values. And my x values here are on this horizontal um, axis, and so it's going to affect it horizontally. And in this case, it's going to shift it either left or right. And we remember that our x's are big fat liars. They're liars. That's the reason they're our x's. And so we think it looks like it should go to the left one. But since they're liars, we know that actually this is going to shift to the right one. So this here, inside the 
parentheses there, is going to be a horizontal shift, a horizontal translation or a horizontal shift. And what's going to happen is it's going to affect our x's. We're going to take all our x values and we can add one to all those x values. This two is outside the grouping symbol or outside the function. So it's going to affect our y values. When it's outside the grouping symbol, it affects our y values. So this one's going to affect our y values. Our y values are along this vertical axis, and so it's going to be a vertical shift or a vertical translation. Y values are truthful. They always tell the truth. So here we're just going to add two to our y values. So we can take each one of our y values and just add two from our parent functions. We can take each one of our parent function y values and just add two. This is a vertical shift. A vertical shift. So it's just going to shift it up to. So we're going to take our parents and just move it to the right one and up to. So we're going to move right one and up to. We'll come back and graph that in just a minute. In this example, we have an absolute value function. So we know that the absolute value function is going to look like this, a V, absolute value. Then, Let's look at each operation that's occurring. So here we have a two. Notice it's outside the grouping symbol. So when it's outside the grouping symbol, that affects our y values. So this one is going to be, it's a multiplication uh, on the function. This is a dilation. Since it's affecting our y values, it's going to be a dilation that's a, a vertical. And it's going to stretch our uh, function. So this is a vertical stretch. A vertical stretch. Or you could say that what we're doing is taking all our y values and multiplying them by 2. So I'm going to take all my parent y values and multiply, by them, multiply them by 2. Then this one is occurring inside the function with the x. So therefore it is a horizontal, it affects my x's. X's are liars, so instead of adding 3 to all my x values, I'm going to subtract 3 from all my x values. And this is going to be a horizontal shift to the left. Horizontal shift, left 3. This one's going to stretch it vertically. And then this one is outside the function, so it's outside the grouping symbol, it's going to affect my y values. And y's are truthful, so we're just going to subtract 4 from all our y values, and that's going to shift it vertically down 4. So this is a vertical shift, vertical shift down 4. Last but not least here, we have a square root function. Remember the square root function looks like that, like your teapot, um, part of the teapot there. So there's our square root function. And we have three operations occurring in here. Underneath the function or inside with our x's, we have a, uh, the functions being multiplied by negative one. That negative one is gonna cause a horizontal, because it's in here with the x's, so horizontal, reflection. This is a horizontal reflection. Reflection. In other words, it's going to take and take my um, teapot here and just turn my spout around. It's just going to reflect it about the y-axis. Then this here uh, is inside the function as well, so it affects my x, my x values. So it too is going to shift it horizontally, but it's the opposite of what I think. So I'm going to subtract one from all my x values, or I'm going to have a horizontal shift. Of, uh, to the left. And this out here, I'm going to add to outside my function, so it's affecting my y's. It's not inside the grouping symbol like the other ones were. It's outside the grouping symbol. 
So therefore, I'm adding two to all my y values. And so you can think of that as adding two, or it's, it's a vertical shift up. A vertical shift up to. I'm going to move my graph up to. So those are the different transformations that are occurring within these examples. Now I have to use my order of operations and my parents to help me to transform. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to write my parents for each one of these. So remember this one's a quadratic and we very carefully learned these five points for the quadratic function. Negative two, uh, four, negative one, one, zero, zero, one, one, two, four. You want to be able to just spit those points out to make it easy for your transformations. Then what we're going to do is we have to make sure that we're doing these in the correct order. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to horizontally shift it. In other words, we're going to take that um, quadratic and we're just going to move it to the right, to the left, to the left, to the right, to the right, uh, one spot. Or here, mathematically or algebraically, I'm just going to add one to each one of my parent um, values here. So I'm going to add one to each one of these. So when I shift it to the right one spot, my new points would be at negative 1, 4, 0, 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 3, 4. But I also need to, now there's no reflection, there's no stretch or shrink. So the last thing I need to do is a vertical shift. So I'm going to take my function that's been moved over 1. I'm now going to shift it up 2. Or, algebraically, I can just add 2 to all my parent um, values here. So I'm just going to add 2 to shift it up 2 to all those y values. So that I end up with 6, 3, 2, 3, and 6 as my y values. So the points on this new function, trend, using transformations, my new points are at negative 1, 6. Negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, 3, 0, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 2, 3, and 3, 6, 3, 6. So it's still a quadratic function, so it looks like a quadratic. Notice that it was shifted to the right one and up two. So my new points there on this, this function are as follows. Uh, zero, three, and three, six, and negative one, six. Now I can check to make sure that my points are actually correct just by picking one and plugging it in to make sure. So let's take like the out, the input two. If I were to input two into my function, I'm just checking myself. Here I used transformations to graph it, but I'm just gonna check my values. So two minus one is one, one squared is one, and one plus two is three. So I should have a point on my graph at two, three. Let's just check it, two, Three, sure enough, there is a point there. So I have um, done my points here correctly. And I've taken my parent and used my transformations, that horizontal shift and the vertical shift to um, graph that function. Now let's graph this absolute value function. So again, I'm gonna start with my parent. So we learned these five points for our parent functions. Negative two, two, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. So now I'm going to look at each piece of it and I'm going to make sure I go in the correct order. So the first thing I need to do is my horizontal shift. And my horizontal shift here is this 3. Now remember, instead of moving it to the right 3, we're going to move it to the left 3 because those x's are big liars. So we're just going to take it and shift it to the left, left three. Or I can just subtract 
3 from all of my x values algebraically. So remember that when I say I'm subtracting 3, that's the same thing as adding a negative 3 to it. So I can take each one of my x values and just add a negative 3 to them. So negative 3 and negative 2 gives me a negative 5. Negative 3 and negative 1 is a negative 4. Negative 3 and 0 is a negative 3. Negative 3 and 1 is a negative 2. And negative 3 and 2 is a negative 1. Okay, next, I'm going to look for a reflection or a dilation. Either a dilation this way or that way. So I don't have a reflection. There's no negative out there. But there is a 2. So I'm going to stretch and shrink this or stretch this guy vertically. It's not inside the grouping, so it's affecting my y values. So that means I've moved it to the left, and now I'm going to stretch it. And in order to do that, I'm going to take all my y values and multiply them by 2. So taking each one of my y values and multiplying them by 2. So after I stretch it, my new y values are 4, 2, 0, 2, and 4. So if I just had these two um, transformations, my new points would be at negative, four, negative 5, 4, negative 4, 2, negative 3, 0, negative 2, 2, and negative 1, 4. But I have one more um, transformation here. I have a vertical shift. So this is going to um, uh, translate my function down four units. Or I can do that algebraically by subtracting four from each one of my y values. So I'm just going to take each one of those y values and subtract four from them. So I have zero, negative two, negative four, two minus four is a negative two, and zero minus, I mean four minus four is zero. So here on this algebraic tree here that shows um, what I've done. Here I shifted to the left three, vertical translation, I mean a horizontal translation to the left three. Here we stretched it vertically times two, and then here we um, shifted down four. And the new points on this graph, on this um, function, are at negative five, zero, so at negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0. Negative 4, negative 2. Negative 4, negative 2. Negative 3, negative 4. Negative 3, negative 4. Negative 2, negative 2. And negative 1, 0. And we connect all those points. To make our absolute value shape. And there's our new function. It's a little wiggly over there. There's our new function. There's the v of x function. Our v function there. So um, notice that it has been shifted to the left 3, down 4, and it has stretched that parent. So there's that absolute value function. Last but not least, we have our square root function. And we're going to do the same thing here where we make sure that we follow our order of operations. We need to start with the horizontal shift. So inside my grouping symbol, I'm first doing this horizontal shift. Now notice that it's a little bit weird. Well, let me start with my parent. Remember, my parent here is the square root. So my parent um, looks like this with these four points, 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, and 9, 3. And we're going to take that parent, and the first thing we're going to do is subtract 1. We're going to do a horizontal shift first. We're going to subtract 1 from all of our um, x values. Or you can think of it as adding a negative 1. Subtracting 1 is the same thing as adding a negative 1 to it. We're going to take it and shift our whole thing over one spot to the left. So when I do that, 
my new points are at negative 1, z uh, 0, 0, 1, 3, 2, and 8, 3. So if it just had the plus 1 in there and nothing else, it would just shift it over and those would be my points. The next thing I look for is a reflection or a stretch and shrink. In this case, I have a reflection. It's going to take my function and just reflect it over this y-axis. Horizontally, it's going to reflect it. So I just take all of my x values and I just multiply all those, or divide, all the x values by a negative 1. You can think of it as uh, dividing by a negative 1 and multiplying by a negative 1 are basically the same thing. So I'm just going to say multiply by that negative 1, by that reciprocal. So when I do that, it flops it over, reflects it over the y-axis. So negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. 0 times negative 1 is 0. Negative 1 times 3 is a negative 3. And negative 1 times 8 is a negative 8. So again, if I didn't have that on there, my new points would be at 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 3, 2, and negative 8, 3. But I have one last thing to do. My last um, operation is the vertical shift. So I'm going to take all my y values and just shift them up two spots. Or I'm just going to add 2 to all my y values. So for each one of my y values, I'm just adding 2. So I end up with 2, 3, 4, and 5. So the new points on this graph are at 1, 2, 1, 2, 0, 3, 0, uh, 0, 3, negative 3, 4, negative 3, 4, negative 8, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, and up to 5, and there is my square root function. Remember that that square root function had an ending point because of the zero, so we've done on graph paper, it'd be a little prettier. Sorry about that. Um, uh, I don't know what that point is. It's not a point. So I have points here at one, two, zero, three, uh, negative three, four, and at negative eight, five. And notice what happened with my function. You know, I took that the um, spout here, and I just took it and moved it to the left one, flipped it over, and then shifted it up two. And sure enough, that's what our graph looks like on there. So when we are dealing with multiple transformations, we need to follow our order of operations. And then if it's inside the function, it's affecting your x's. And if it's outside the function, it's affecting your y's. When it affects your y's, our order of operations makes complete sense. We multiply before we um, add or subtract. When it's affecting our x's though, just like everything else, our x's are liars. So it doesn't make as much sense because then we're gonna add or subtract first and then multiply because we have to do that horizontal shift before we do any reflection or uh, stretch or shrink. So hopefully now we can graph those multiple um, transformations with our functions. Thanks for watching.